So in this video, we're going to be talking about Hesiod, the other great monolithic early influence on Greek culture. So Hesiod is um, roughly contemporary, we think, with, uh, with Homer. He is supposed to have lived uh, either in the late 8th century or the early 7th century, um, but uh, uh, in a way very different from, uh, from, from Homer. He is uh, extremely emblematic of the transformations and expression that are characteristic of the archaic period. Uh, and this starts with the, the nature of the, uh, of the narrative that Hesiod engages in. Um, he, uh, uh, the, both of the, the major works that have survived under his name and that were extremely influential, uh, throughout Greek culture in the archaic period and long after, uh, into the classical period, into the Hellenistic era, um, these works represent uh, um, strikingly innovative approaches to telling stories of uh, how uh, people interact with um, the world around them. Uh, the first major work is Theogony, which describes the story of the gods. Uh, we can uh, we can look at Homer and say that Homer uh, talks about uh, the gods and their relationships, uh, their interactions, their dialogues, in as much as they are responses to human actions. Um, but uh, the Theogony enters into the the world of the gods themselves, um, describes the, um, the 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 genesis of the gods uh, in in each stage in in particular detail, and their contribution to the world that humans find themselves in, and their motivations uh, um, uh, in in terms of each other, in terms of the physical world, in terms of humanity, uh, so that, uh, so that, 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 uh, Hesiod is, is engaged in, um, a, a meticulous and, and systematic explaining of the world around him, uh, uh through mythology. Um, uh, the other major work, Works and Days, is, is, uh, is very much of the, a uh, shift in the archaic period in expression away from the uh, away from the grand away from the overall and general away from the objective toward the individual toward the personal toward the subjective um, this is the same phenomenon that brings us uh, the emergence of lyric poetry and we see it in uh, this this very personal uh, essay on what it is to be a man, what it is to be a property owner, what it is to be responsible, um, and so uh, this is uh, this is told with um, uh, with uh, the the customs and and actions of of. You know the 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 narrator of Hesiod as an ordinary farmer of a of a reasonable sized estate uh, who has to deal with the the problems and hurdles involved in keeping that estate secure uh, and in being a good man and um, it, there is a religious component to this as well the the cumulative. Uh, um, you know, theological understanding of Hesiod that we see from both of these works, and especially in works and days, uh, as it relates to human beings and human action, is that um, is that uh, uh, things that people do that are that are positive, that are sensible, um, that are uh, responsible, are the things that the gods will um, that the things that the gods will understand and will reward. Things that people do that are irresponsible are things that uh, the gods will respond to negatively and punished because um, irresponsibility has a negative impact on the community. Irresponsibility is uh, is is the same kind of thing um, as as the the sins that are committed in Homer. Um, Homeric sins are are you know emotional uh, selfishness, and 
the, the sins that are committed in, in Hesiod, the sins attributed to the prodigal brother Persis that, uh, that uh, Hesiod is, is remonstrating with and instructing, um, these are, are sins of, of social irresponsibility, of social selfishness, um, you know, wantonness, profligacy, waste. Um, these are things that, uh, that damage not only one's own personal property, but the, the, the strength, the stability, the, the haleness of the community as a whole. Um, one of the other things that comes up in the works of Hesiod is uh, his, uh, his discussions of women. Um, key and component to this is a, a discussion of the, the myth of Pandora, and, and Hesiod is one of the best sources for the story of Pandora, which uh, comes off, especially to uh, people from a Judeo-Christian uh, tradition who are already familiar with the story of Adam and Eve and find that uh, you know Eve uh, and her um, you know disobedience, which is the sin that, that Eve commits in, in eating from the the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, uh, and and her susceptibility to uh, being persuaded to do this by the serpent. Um, People find this in and of itself to have um, elements of misogyny. The the myth of Pandora, that is essentially the Greek story of the first woman, uh, is uh, comes across as, as even more um, uh, negative toward women. Uh, you know, the the basic idea as it's represented in, in Hesiod. Uh, needs to be understood in terms of the, of the points that Hesiod uh, is most interested in. Um, uh, Pandora represents the problems that uh, women potentially represent among the many problems that are faced by, um, by uh, men in the course of their lives um, because uh, women uh, uh, pose a potential um, a hurdle to a man's self-sufficiency, um, to his ability to control the uh, the uh, in its entirety the uh, the strength and prosperity of his estate of his life. Um, this is this is deliberate, and the focus of this is uh, not so much in terms of the um, the 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 negative aspects of women, but rather the negative aspects of men. In other words, when Hesiod talks about Pandora, when Hesiod talks about um, you know potential female suitors and and uh, and and you know wives and and, and so forth in uh, uh, in works and days, uh, his his chief concern is the vulnerability, the susceptibility, the weakness that men have as a gender um, toward women and how this can uh, interfere uh, with uh, uh, one's, uh, one's reason, one's uh, command of one's own faculties, one's, uh, one's own uh, level-headedness. Uh, it, uh, it, it interferes with um, the the goal of self-sufficiency that Hesiod is uh, emphasizing as being the key means toward the achievement of, of, of what is his ideal man, someone who is uh, perfectly responsible, perfectly self-sufficient, perfectly able to, um, to contribute to his community and, and for the community to feel that he has made his contribution. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the mythology of, um, of, of Hesiod that includes Pandora, uh, pre preparatory to this, uh, goes into a discussion of what is for Hesiod the ultimate female principle, Hecate. Um, that uh, that uh, Hecate is a a the embodiment of all that uh, the 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 female ideal is capable of. Uh, um, Hecate is a is a goddess who is 
um, both virginal and uh, and proactive, uh, both virginal and maternalistic, both virginal and sisterly. She is a a power that is uh, uh, on a level with Zeus, uh, who is uh, actually come before Zeus in in Hesiod's description of the uh, of the development of the gods, and is is not beholden to him in the same way that most of the other Olympian gods are. Uh, and in, in Hecate, you know, uh, Hesiod uh, has, has nothing but ad admiration, you know, not for her, um, uh, for her distance and remove as a goddess, but for her, uh, for her role as an embodiment of, of the potency of, of the, the, the female idea. Uh, this traces back ultimately to the idea that the first gender in Greek mythology is actually Gaia, uh, the mother goddess, and it is from the specificity of, of Gaia's gender that uh, the 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 first fee, uh, the first male god is derived in complement. Uh, you know, ultimately there is a sense that uh, the 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 female. Uh, principle is, is the one that is the, is the most potent and powerful because it is reproductive, because it creates the future. Um, and therefore, um, the, 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 has the most capacity, uh, to, uh, skew men away from the achievement of, of what they must do for their communities. Uh, and so this is the context in which one must understand a uh, Hesiod's discussion of women. It is not simple mythology, uh, simple misogyny, uh, uh, so much as a, a a warning to men of the the, the susceptibility that they have uh, to the uh, to the potency of the female principle. Ultimately. Um, both Hesiod and Homer come to be the foundations of, of Greek uh, culture and education, uh, and this is precisely because they complement each other in a very, uh, in a very obvious way, in a, in a way that was very highly appreciated. Uh, uh, Homer it deals with uh, society and culture from the top down. Uh, Homer describes things from above, deals with grand themes, and and uh, and you know the you know sweeping gestures and and all these sorts of things, and uh, and goes on at at massive length to tell uh, epic stories of 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 you know broad strokes human nature, and the the danger that uh, human flaws pose. To the success of humanity, uh, Hesiod uh, uh, speaks from the bottom up about what it is like to be a a simple freeholder, a, a man who owns a sizable estate, uh, and uh, the responsibilities that that incurs toward himself, toward the community, uh, toward that uh, property, toward the the collective state and society. Uh, and uh, and these are things that um, uh, uh, resonate in, in, on an entirely different scale and level from uh, from what Homer does. Both of these things are you know instruments by which uh, the, uh, the the Greeks of the uh, of the archaic and classical and Hellenistic eras uh, come to know what is expected of them in relation to their fellow. Um, fellow Greeks and in relation to the gods as well. And uh, that's that.